Uh, if it's the first time to your channel, welcome. Welcome to the channel. Um, I'm using a new computer. Uh, last week's live stream was... <sighs> left a lot to be... Yes. <laughs> left a lot to be desired. Um, I'm just wait. I'm just like to wait a minute. I'm waiting for the uh, YouTube to start. Okay, and it's starting. And I'm listening to the ad right now. It's Taco John's ad. It's kind of nice. Taco. It, today is Cinco de Mayo. Recording this, and I have my Corona with me, as what I'm drinking because Cinco de Mayo. That's a good idea. All right, so uh, I am. Uh, I, I uh, if you're if you're on the live stream, give me a, a thumbs up. You can hear me. Thumbs up. You can see us. I'm trying new situations tonight. New things going on, and uh, yeah, we're just trying it out. The oh, the chip shortage is old news. Um, oh, the ship. Yes. All right. I think I think people can see us. Jill, are you frozen again? I don't know. It seems like Jill keeps freezing on my screen. Let me go back here and see the Jill is. Yes, you're frozen again. I don't know why. There she goes. Okay, now you're... And... Yeah, she, she, <laughs> Jill, Jill keeps freezing. I may have to have her call back and not the app, and we may have to figure that out because, yeah, you're freezing again. Okay, so so technical difficulty. It's new computer. I'm trying new stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect from Jill and give me about 30 seconds and then call me back, and then I'm going to not use the app this time. I'm going to use just my uh, the uh, website. All right. Okay. So we're going to lose Jill for a moment, but uh, yeah, we're having, that's okay. This, this, this does work at some point. I guarantee it does work at some point. Um, I'm going to quit this and I'm going to, okay. So then, and then I'm going to take and we're going to look for Jill. I, we'll, we'll get this live stream in a minute. I promise you. So, yes, after last week's uh, bad live stream, I went and bought a new computer to fix the issues I was having. And uh, this is the new computer. And uh, you guys are seeing a little behind the scenes of what's going on with the new computer. But, uh, sorry for the technical difficulties, but... It, I was just telling Jill, I said, it's actually pretty remarkable that this stuff actually works, considering that she's in Chicago and I'm in Nebraska, and we're talking live on YouTube. I mean, I'm sorry, but that is that is fairly impressive. Okay, so as soon as Jill calls back, we will get her back on. She's trying to call back in. Okay, I don't know why she's not getting through. Is the phone busy, Jill? Um Okay, let's see, Jill's back, like I promised. And then we'll get her back on screen here in a second. So, see, I think that's better. I, so, <clears throat> I was using, we used Discord for this, and I was using Discord app instead of just the web browser. And it's not my fault, darn it. I was doing it right. Why would you blame me? It's not my fault. And then why did my screen get all goofy? Let's see. I got thin all of a sudden, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but yeah, I got I have black bars now. All right, well, I'm just going to put myself in the corner. And uh, we're going to keep this party rolling. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. <laughs> okay. Yes, I moved you around. No, we, we got it. We got it. This is This is good. Now you're not frozen. You're on the screen. We're all here. It's party time in Cinco de Mayo. I was doing the, like I said, I have the Corona light, which is kind of garbage, but that's okay. 
Um, uh, yeah, Jill is not in a suitcase today. Uh, that's probably a good thing. I, I do... Where did she go again? Huh. I know. I don't know. You keep... You keep... I keep losing you for some reason. Why did you leave? Now you're back. No audio from Jill. All right. Let me... See, this is this is how we do these things. Oh, um, did I... Settings. I bet you it's because I have the... Output. Yeah, I'll plug that. Okay. Let's let's uh Okay. So Jill, do you have audio now? Uh I don't know. Can can people hear me now? And now I like I went back you I disappeared on the screen again. Oh that's right. You should have bought a Dell. Screw that. Ugh. <laughs> Dude, you should have got a Dell. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I uh after years Yeah, oh. <laughs> okay, so let's let's see. Jill said she wants more. It's okay, I can read lips. Jill said she wants more tomatoes. <laughs> Very faint. Like really, really good when you have a harvest of tomatoes that you, uh, because you have to take out the skins, you have to take out the seeds, and then, uh, yeah. Okay, so I just, I turned you, I, yeah, I turned you up more. Okay. I, I, I love it when people say they can't hear me because I'm like, I'm actually really loud. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that you are. I, like Jonathan will be in the other room, and, and he, he will he will be um, like I, I can hear you clearly out here, and like. Hmm. Um. Okay. So I, I I turned you up all the way, waiting for a comment before we get into stuff. I I did. I think we're close, but I did want to say a big thank you to everybody who's on to live stream. D did you know this? Um. Oh, per we're getting perfect. Perfect. Okay, good. Um, I don't know if you knew this, Jill, but we're at. Let me get the. Let me get the latest count. Let me get the. Hold on. Let me get the latest count. Um, because it's, it's in. We're we're cresting to a milestone. That is um, impressive. I should do it on my phone. It'd probably be faster. Uh, getting. Working good. Working good. Okay. So I will. Uh, we are currently. 49,952 subscribers. Ooh, 48 more. Right, 48 more. Um, I do remember the old dude Dell commercials. It's been a long time. Uh, so yeah, so we're we're getting to that magical milestone that doesn't really matter, but it does matter to some people. And it's all, the subscriber count doesn't matter. It's like just a vanity number, but it is cool when you hit those uh, milestones and you're able to celebrate those milestones. So yes, that is uh, that is really cool. And I'm really happy, really pleased we're getting to that point. So let's let's talk about the news real fast. Um, this Charlie wants to ask a news question here. So is GM and Ford ramp up production on their 2021 models? Uh, th they're doing the best they can. Everybody's facing yeah. chip shortages. And frankly, um, it's just like, it's just, Terrible trying to get the trying to get enough uh, chips, super semiconductor chips to build vehicles. Um, yeah, it's just it's crazy. You have a 1080p. I'll have to double check that video next time I do a live stream. I sorry, I've been playing around with this quite a bit. Um, so yeah, it's it's incredible to see the automakers shut down. I just saw a story today that Bronco production was shut down, going to be shut down for two weeks. Um, I know the Super Duty's been hit. I know the F one fifty's been hit. 
GM has been doing a lot of stuff. Um, GM is actually building vehicles without the active fuel management so they can build them faster. Yeah. Um, there is, we're going to get this to this, we'll get it to right now. Um, it's going to be some crazy images. There's currently an image on the drive.com. And I'll put these links in the in in this uh, live stream. Because they were able to get their hands on satellite photos out of Kentucky um, near the Speedway. And they show Ford Super Duties being parked in the Speedway, like parking lot, like thousands of these because they don't have enough parts to finish them. That's how bad it is. <laughs> I mean, Jill and I are lucky that we're getting press vehicles to be able to drive. There could be a shortage for us reviewing vehicles short in the future if they can't build them enough. I mean, it, it, it's insane right now. It, it's, yeah, it's I crazy. I that our test vehicles would be effective because they would give us pre-production models. And, and they would just be like, these are pre-production, so don't judge without the chip. So, right. I mean... Yeah, it just I mean, we don't know. It, there's lots of stuff going on. It could be it could be really interesting what's happening. I'm hearing a lot of people that um, are frustrated trying to buy a new truck. They're trying to buy something and they're running they're running into the problems. There's dealerships in Kansas City near the plant in Kansas City that don't have enough inventory. They have like instead of having 150 trucks in a lot, they have like six. I mean, it is it is just insane. And what's interesting about the whole situation is GM announced their first quarter earnings were huge, <laughs> were absolutely huge. Um, then what's I'm looking at the 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 story right now. One number was uh, thirty two point five billion dollars compared to thirty two point seven billion at the same time last year. Uh, net income of thirty billion or three billion nine percent. So what what interesting in that story is they destroyed the estimates. Like the estimates were the consensus was they're going to do. A dollar oh eight a share as far as um, profit, and they posted two dollars and twenty five cents per share, which is just massive. And the reason they were able to do that was because they shifted all their production to trucks and SUVs, which are hot right now. The full size trucks, full size SUVs, and they put their super chips, uh, semiconductor chips in those, and then they just built them. And so they were able to get around to that. So yeah, and then I saw. That Oshawa, the plant that GM tried to close in Canada, so Oshawa was a truck plant for many, many years, and they tried to close it. And there was a whole thing with the Canadian um, Auto Workers Union, which fought hard and they won, and uh, they were able to keep that plant. And now they're talking about ramping up production in Oshawa, having that go live like six months faster, just to build more trucks. And I do. I also was reading some stories where there's a lot of production right now, some assembly production being done to create semiconductor plants in the United States. A couple of the, um, I don't know if they're Chinese companies or whatever, they've looked at investing in building production facilities like in Arizona and different places just to ramp up production of semiconductor chips so it doesn't happen again. But um, from all the outside sources I'm seeing is this will not be over soon. It's gonna last for a long time and you'll see shortages on new vehicles from next probably year or so. Yeah. Well, and it, and so I went um, car shopping with a family friend this past week, and, um, you know, she's not looking for a truck, but even cars are, are being affected. We were looking, she was looking at the Subaru Legacy, and she wanted the top tier touring trim, and they didn't have any on the lot. And they're like, well, you do understand that it's going to be a little bit of a wait if you want this, because they have the limited, but not the touring. And Luckily, uh, she doesn't need to buy a car tomorrow. Um, her car is perfectly fine. She just wants something new. And I'm like, you are in the perfect position because you can put your name on the list. And then when they get it, it's yours. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the inventories, even for, for cars, are just... Yeah, I saw a news story the other day on the... Um, I was actually watching local news and the guys were like, did you know that car shortage is out there and actually lumber prices are up 300%. And yeah, lumber is expensive. Uh, wiring, house wiring is expensive. If you're going to build a house right now, I think the estimate was you're going to spend, uh, was it 15 to 12, 15 to thirty percent more right now to build a house than it was a year ago. Uh, and then this is this is something that's going to kind of fire some people up. Uh, another news story said that gas prices will be going higher this summer, 
um, based on the market resetting itself. I mean, gas is a commodity, so it goes up and down, up and down. But also, but also the fact that they are short gas tanker drivers. <laughs> of all yeah. things, I I was like, so they they don't have people to deliver the gas, and I'm like, holy cow. Yeah. So yeah. You know, I, I've been having conversations about like uh, shortages of workers. Like people are trying to hire, uh, but nobody either they don't want to work or they don't want to work in that area or it's not paying enough or whatever. But but people people can't fill jobs like at the plants at the at restaurants at whatever and. So it's just, this is like a fascinating, it goes well beyond the, the chip shortage, but I, I, it's just a fascinating thing that COVID has done um, to our economy and to the workforce. And I, I don't know where it ends. I think we're going to be looking at, I mean, problems well into like next year as the, the economy tries to reset itself. Yeah, I mean, this happened. This this all started last year, and it's just been going on and on. I mean, it's it's going to be it's going to be an ongoing issue. It's going to be interesting to see how it all works out. So, I I think that with that statement, we probably can close the door on all of the positive news we've brought to you tonight. I I know we've we've definitely positive news. <laughs> I I feel like we we uh, haven't really done our our duty, and everything is really negative at the moment. But yeah, so. Uh, Let's go, let's go to positive news. Let's go to the Chicago Auto Show is coming back. Yes. So yay, Auto Show is coming back. Yes. Uh, well, so here, here's a little bit of inside baseball. I, I heard through the grapevine. So I, I, I don't like our mayor. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, I don't like her um, because I don't agree with um, how she's handled the, the, the lockdowns and the, the COVID situation um she would tell us one thing and then she would go do another you can't go get a haircut and then she gets a haircut so um i've not i've not liked how she has handled things and so apparently they they needed to announce something happy and good this week and they've been working with um the chicago auto show to make these dates happen and they made the announcement. Chicago made the announcement without telling the folks who put on the auto show. <laughs> and so they were kind of like blindsided. And they're like, well, you know what's going to happen? We just didn't know it was going to happen right this instant. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think that was uh, kind of a, a funny little thing. Because, like, I mean, okay, Chicago needed some good news. This is definitely good news. But um, uh, communication. Yes. Communication, have the conversation. Um, but but yeah, so July dates. So I think it's like the 15th through the 21st or the 20th. It's like a, a Thursday through uh, Monday. And so it'll be like a long weekend event. They're looking at doing a indoor outdoor experience. They're changing it from, used to be in the North and South Halls, but they've moved it to the um, West Hall so that they have better access to the outdoor space. And so, uh, it, you know, they're, they're talking about closing down some of the streets and making it an outdoor festival. There'll be more um, test drives available and food trucks. And so, uh, you know, it just by all accounts, it seems like it's going to be a really, really cool thing that they're doing. And it will be the first major event in Chicago coming out of the pandemic. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, so I wrote an article um, at Jill's Behest about how we need a, we need auto shows. Mm -hmm. Consumers need it. Journalists need it too. I mean, frankly, you know, to be able to hop in every new truck and just see them all together in one day or do video all together one day. I mean, you know, th there are definite reasons we need the shows too, and we need to talk to our colleagues and have FaceTime. And there, you know, we have a business case to be there as well, as much as my other. Colleagues don't uh, always agree with me on that, which it's not surprising. A lot of them don't agree with me on anything. Um, but I, I, I do think it's important for them to come back, and I do like the fact that they're coming back. I just it's going to be interesting to see how much things change. I was uh, I was talking with a automaker about this, about whether he was going to do or whether they, I should say, more he it's a guy's talking to, um, whether they are going to keep doing reveals, and he let me know. He goes, you know. He goes, 
when we do a reveal at the New York Auto Show, and we have our 15 minutes on stage, and we have our presentation, all that kind of stuff, it's a million dollars. And <laughs> I, I was a little bit like, holy cow. He's like, yeah, it's a million dollars every time we do our presentation on stage. And he goes, you know, if you look at the, um, I think just, our thing just fluttered. Um, but if you look at the expense they're putting on these auto shows versus what they're getting out from them, and especially with YouTube going live, live reveals and digital reveals, and I'm doing a, I'm doing a, 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 a virtual thing Friday. I think you're doing the same thing. Um, an automaker has sent us embargoed information, which means we can't run it until a specific date, about a new vehicle. And they've asked us, starting at this time on this day, to go online and watch the video presentation on it. <laughs> so it's... I don't think I am doing that because I don't have anything on my schedule for Friday other than not being in Chicago and um, helping my parents. So right, I, I should I should. I have, no, I have no idea what you're talking about, actually. I will forward this to you, and then um, you you can you can read. It's really interesting. They sent me an email and said it's going to be here, and we're going to make it go live at this time and watch the video, and then it's embargoed until I think a couple days later, something like that. So it does. It does bring up the question: Like, do reveals still matter? Auto shows. Do you guys get excited? Do consumers get excited about it and saying, you know, this is this is what I want. This is you know, I want to be able to be the wow factor, or you know, what what the issue is. I, I just I find it interesting. Say no. The consumer and. I don't think consumers get excited about it. What consumers get excited about is like, okay, the new Corvette has been launched and it's going to be on the floor of the Chicago Auto Show and I can see it. Like, they don't care when it's been launched. They just actually want to be able to go in and see it and maybe sit in it and have their photo taken with it and take their own photos. I I mean, maybe reveals happen like before the show virtually and media days instead of being two days long end up being like one day so that you can come in network get your own photos and do your own video and walk around through the vehicle um so maybe reveals at auto shows cease to exist but the media day presentation or the media day itself continues just so journalists can come in and get their own footage i mean Local TV loves this stuff. And, um, you know, during the Chicago Auto Show, uh, you know, they will do live hits from the show floor every morning at 5 a.m. And, uh, you know, I when I worked for a broadcast company, I would go, I would actually go to the Chicago Auto Show at 4 a.m. And, and when all the lights are off and nobody's there except for the, the Jeep guys setting up the Jeep test track. And I would be there with my laptop computer and I would Skype in to a TV show in Michigan or in, you know, someplace else. But, you know, there it's 4 a.m. in Chicago, but it's 5 a.m. In, in Michigan. So, you know, there I am being the lone person paying $20 for parking so that I can do this, you know, live thing um, from the show floor. And the only place where there were lights on was at the Jeep Tech because they're on 24-7. But um, so, I mean... Local TV will go there during the consumer days. They don't necessarily need the media days. And they're there to just show, hey, look at this Jeep test track. Hey, look at this cool car that, you know, is going to be on display. Hey, look at this concept. So Chicago specifically has been, I think, the model of a consumer show and basically saying, you know, media, it's great to have you. We really would like you to cover us, but consumers are more important than you are. Yeah. And I don't think that's wrong. I don't think that's wrong. I think that's the way to go. Consumers are more important. Um, it, it is going to be interesting to see how that works out. So there's some conversation about uh, getting back some trucks and SUVs. They're like, stop talking about anything else. Go trucks and SUVs. Well, so we were going to talk about that a little bit. The Ford Explorer has a new Timberline edition that's out. It's more of an off-road version of that. And um, Dwayne wants to know if I can show videos. So I, I am working on this, Dwayne. Um, I have been thinking about trying this again. Because it's um, a little complex on the software end to do it on a live stream, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna I'm gonna poke something up. 
Because, should we, sh I thought about doing this. Jill and I have this video that we disagree about. And I wonder if we should use the 60 people on here to tell us whether it sucks or not. Uh, you, you can try that. It, it, it sucks. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> and then, by the way, my husband agrees with me, but it's more about the yeehaw that he doesn't agree with than anything else. All right. Uh, we could just do the, the first couple minutes. So it's a Jeep 392 video. Um, Dwayne, if you want to see this. And... Uh, we, I tried a bunch of new stuff. I had some new toys, and I tried different things, and and it didn't. You used them all. No, I did not. So there was. All at the same time. It's well, like, yeah. Well, no. I th there's there's reason for that. So, um, let's see. Let's so uh, yes. So we have yes, 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 yes. Tell us, Tim. All right. So I'm I'm gonna go into my background settings here. Um, I can do it like this in a new window. So yeah, you guys can be our, our test, um, test audience, test audience. And, and I want to say that the tones don't match and that's my biggest issue with it. Okay. I see. I think I, I can fix that. I think I can change my tone and I think more mirrors your tone. I, I can't see your eye right now, but I'm sure you're giving me like some sort of side eye. I'm giving you a. Mm, you give me the a look. Yeah, a look. I'm yeah. Giving you a look. I am giving you a look. Yeah, I, I definitely thought you were giving me a look. I could, I could just tell. So. Um, <laughs> you can hear it over the the sound wave. Oh, I've known you long enough. Uh, let's see. Uh. It's just take a minute to, to load up. This I'm this is the new Mac M1 uh, thingy, so it, it it is does its job. Okay, so come on, load up. Okay. Oh, well, how much of this video are you showing them? I'm just going to show the, the the intro to the Yeehaw. Oh, God. What, <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, stop. It's take. It's it's it's, it's going to be interesting. We will get their viewpoint. They the, we have we have a we have a bunch of fans who already like the channel, who can give us their input, and it's taking forever to load. It is loading right now. I don't know why it's taking so long to load. Boring. I guess that's my part problem with it is like I just come off like flat. But the so, yeah, the yeehaw also. Mm. Are are you more upset at yourself or or me? It just doesn't. It doesn't mesh. It just doesn't go together. I I don't know. Like it. I mean, we're both enthusiastic in different ways, and um. And I, it just seems very disjointed to me. That that's my problem with it. Is it just doesn't seem to. Okay. Come together. Yeah, we're uh, we're yeah, we're working on this. I did, I did, I did say yeehaw. No, I, I may need an IT guy. It just, I have, I'm Nebraska. I mean, I have limited bandwidth, um, issues. It's still loading. I don't know why it's taking so long to load. And I, I edited on the other computer, so I can't like pull it up on the other computer. So when it loads, I promise I will show you guys that video because it's just taking forever. Huh. Um, I feel like Jill went away. <laughs> Did I minimize Jill? I minimized Jill. Okay. I know. Don't minimize the Jills. I'm... Nor do we have half Jills. <laughs> we not cut up the Jills. We talked about that. You were doing. Uh, what were we looking at? We were we were talking about something that's in the vehicle. Um, uh, was it the? It was either the QX. 55 or the Durango and you're like yeah it's like three quarters of a Jill and I was like no 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 you do not chop up the Jills <laughs> um yeah so yeah we're uh I know I don't know where I, Jill law I know I I lost Jill Jill okay. yeah Jill, Jill was so disappointed in the 392 video getting played that she left I'm gonna give you the look again <laughs> oh uh well Happy freezing up Seco de Mayo, I'm having a uh, Corona and she's having a bourbon. God, come, why is this taking so long to load? I wonder if I can download it faster. Oh, and, and I have to tell you, not only am I drinking bourbon, Jonathan wanted to make a point of me telling you that I am drinking Woodford Reserve. Oh. And he said you should be jealous. Okay. It is very good. It is good. 
So I'm going to try downloading this and see if that goes faster because it is it is not it is not working. Um, I feel like I need Jeopardy music, but so yeah. So uh, other other truck and HV news. Um, apparently, and this was news to me. Um, I got into a discussion today with a guy, and the, give me your feedback here on this. So I, we did the video on the Ford F one fifty the twenty twenty one model the five point zero liter. V8 having a belt. It's got a, it's got a belt around the oil pump, and that's um, uh, no, it's got a belt. They switched from a chain to a belt, or one of the two. Something something like this happened. And I had a guy who got mad at me and he said I was spreading misinformation, and I should stop because I'm scaring people away from buying the Ford F-150. Um, I did point out to him that I bought a Ford F-150, and how could I be scaring people away if I actually bought one? I don't think he liked that one. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is downloading faster. It's not wanting to play. It's going to download faster. I don't know what's going on. So th so then I said to him, I said, you know, I've covered other manufacturers with the same, you know, problems. I, we did the uh, Duramax 3-liter diesel that's got the uh, belt. No, yeah, the belt that's in the back of the engine. You have to drop transmission to get to. I've done the Toyota Tundra where we've had no transmission coolers. And so I'm like, I'm like fascinated by this because I'm thinking you guys, the viewers, like this kind of information. When we find information out of a big change like this, and it could be a big change to people. Other people could say it's not a big issue. I think his problem was I made the belt sound like it wasn't reliable, I guess, in his, in his view. And uh, he says, you didn't say it was Kevlar. And I'm like, I didn't say it was Kevlar. I'm like, what the heck? So, yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I found that really interesting. So you guys I saw some comments. I was as nice as I could to be to this guy. There you go. There's my story. Um, I am looking... No, I want to go here. So I have the video downloaded. I have it queued up. Um, apparently downloading is faster than playing it. Note to those IT people. And I'm going to do... Win I'm, I'm trying to get the window so I can show it. Um, dun, 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 dun. There it is. Quick time player. Okay. So I'm I, Jill's kind of massive on the screen right now, but I'm gonna I'm gonna shrink this down. Yes, she's the five foot wonder is larger than life at the moment. So here's the video. I'm gonna put it all big on the screen. So this is big on the screen, and I'm gonna wait a moment because I wanted I want to check the live streaming. There it is. So it's big on the screen. So uh, are you guys ready? You gotta let us know in the comments. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to see this? I will play the. I will play to the. I think it's a two-minute mark on this video. This is. Uh, this is. Uh, yeah, teach me to be honest. It's kind of crazy. Um, this is not seen. It's not out there. You can't go watch this video. It's. It's unlisted. Or it's, uh, I think I made it private now. We're on two. But you can't watch this video. It's not live. It's not monetized. This is. This is. There's nothing here. Okay, so so yeah, you guys you guys are ready. She is very serious. This is the this is the intro. I paused it on just the intro. So give her give her a little slack on this. So so I think you guys are ready. I think you guys can see this. You guys are ready. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to um, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to hit play. Hi, this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and this week we're driving something a little bit special. It is the 2021 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. 392. So what is special about this vehicle is the engine and the fact that Jeep actually built it in the first place. This was a concept car and frankly, I never thought I'd see a V8 engine under the hood of a Wrangler, but here you go. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the engine and we're going to take a look at some of the cool features and some of the things that I don't like on this vehicle. And I'll be honest with you, I really had to pick nits to tell you what I don't like because this vehicle is so flipping fun. I'm having a blast. So let's take a closer look right now. Yee-ha! <laughs> it, uh, it looks a lot different behind the wheel than it does on your screen. That's quite the hill. And uh, yeah, I'm sure glad I had the horsepower to get up that. So here I am, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk out in Nebraska. So Jill is in the city, I'm in the country. We're both driving a Jeep Wrangler 392 this week. And uh, yeah, I had some fun. 
got the freedom top down and uh, cruising the countryside. And in my part of the video, I'll tell you here in a little while, I'll tell you what my thoughts are off-road. I'll tell you how much fun it is on-road a little bit as well. But we're going to go back to Jill here in a second, and she will give you the lowdown on the engine and the interior and her likes and dislikes. But, yeah, I, uh, I certainly had a lot of fun with this Jeep Wrangler 392. And, yeah, mine's in silver. Hers is in red. Really impressive machine and really a lot of fun to drive. Before I get into my likes and dislikes. Okay, so there you go. There is the non-foreseen, uh, unseen footage that you guys could see. And I, you know, I agree. My tone's a little bit different. And uh, I, I could see where I could change that a little bit. Um, but there, yeah, so, so, <laughs> Jill is like, <laughs> she, she's, oh, I gotta, I gotta turn, I gotta turn us back on. I, I gotta, uh. There we go. I'm turning it back on because you have to see Jill's face because Jill is just like she is very concerned. She's very much like, A, what did I do? B, who else is hiring? Where else can I work that doesn't show video like this? And C, what are people going to say about this um, abomination? Oh. Yes. Ab abomination? Is that the word you would use for that? Like, that would be awesome. And if I'm doing my video the way I'm doing it, like, that would be awesome. But there's just, like, it, it doesn't, it's not cohesive. And the problem that I have with the video is the fact that I didn't do the video thinking you were going to chime in. I asked you, I'm like, do we want to co-review this? And you're like, no, go do your own thing. So I didn't, like, send it to you. I didn't say, now back to Jim in Nebraska to look at this off-road thing. Um, like your footage is beautiful. Like your, your drone footage, like it's gorgeous, but it's just like, and I'm droning on about the specs and all of this stuff. And then you're like, yeah! and I'm like, oh my God, this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me, tell me I'm wrong. Like we have what, uh, 80 people on here now. You can tell me I'm wrong, but like the whole thing is kind of like, me droning on and then you yee-hawing and like beautiful drone footage and I'm just like it just it it, it goes like this it's like I'm trying to clap and I can't hit my hands it's not working okay yeah the yee-haw was a little little slow and uh and long I was I was a little nervous filming that or doing the voiceover in that um yeah, the differences are great. I don't. It's interesting. It's it's. Uh, I think I could take that out. I think I could take it out and make mine still playful, but not have the yeehaw. I think that's gonna kind of push people off. But um, I agree. I I didn't. So so the backstory on this is that Jill had this before I did. And I told her to film her part, and then all of a sudden it just I got mine, and so it was one of those situations where it was like, oh well, I should I should Jill sent her stuff over. I was like, man, I'll. This is awesome. We'll just kind of put it together. Um, and so this is my attempt at putting it together. But she, she's right. There is no transitions from Jill to me. Um, I think we could do. I think we could get a little audio and do a little. Uh, but you're not on camera. Um, but I, I don't know. You gotta let, us, let us know in the comments. There's um, there's some people that like it. Some people that, that don't like it. Um, I think we're gonna get that. I, I did a bunch of new uh, transitions and new graphics, and I could take those out. There's those don't really work that well. Um, yeah, I have, then the drone takes off. To grow up, apparently. No, I think John's got an interesting point. Have Tim's video first, then the drone takes off to Chicago and then show Jill's. What if I reversed it? I mean, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I just feel like I, I'm like, uh, and you're like, oh, and, and <laughs> So is that is that is that is your beef? That is your real beef now. Is that you didn't have as much off road time as I did? I had like this much off road time, um, but no, that's not my beef. It's just, it, it. I think for me, it's actually the the lack of transition. 
because you having fun in the vehicle, like that would totally work. If I was like, yeah, now here's Tim having fun and I'm in traffic, you know, like that, that would have been funny. Like that would have been a good transition. Um, you know, me and my 10 miles per gallon versus your, you know, whoop, whoop, we go over a hill. Uh, <laughs> but it was just, again, it was, for me, it wasn't, I mean, it's the tone, but it was also just the lack of transitions and that jazz music that you have at the end, it's got to go. Okay, all right. I was trying. I was trying different music because I've I, I've had got I've gotten a lot of pushback in the music lately. So I've been trying new music. I was trying something funny there. I was trying to, and that didn't work. So I mean, there there are things that worked in the video and things that didn't work in the video. Um, I think the outro was good, and you don't think the outro is very good. I mean, from me, like it just I I no, it didn't it it didn't match yours. So like. What they didn't see at the end of the video, I'm not going to spoiler alert it, but that is funny with my like my dislikes and the petite person problems that I had. Oh, like, I, I, I don't know. So maybe, maybe there's a way to like. Should we show? Out... I could. I could. You want to show the hood? Oh, we could show the hood. That 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 actually is kind of funny. I thought it was hilarious. I think that's so. Um, I had. Uh, let's see. Uh, I let's we're gonna we're gonna show you guys one more thing, um, or well, maybe one more thing. <laughs> if you can cue it up. I'm I got I am I'm telling you this new Mac is changing things. Okay, so there's I. Okay, I think it's right about there. Okay, so here you go, guys. You guys get a special uh, secondary treat. We're gonna do. I'm gonna. This is this is the kind of transition. I don't. I. It's not per second, but it's right after that. Right after this. So um, uh, I'm gonna go back here, and then I gotta hit play. Enjoy. And now I'm going to end my do not like list where I began, and that is with this area here. And it's not really anything to do with the engine. It's <laughs> how you access the engine. This is not an easy process. So at first, I initially was looking inside for a trunk release pull and there isn't one. You can simply unlatch these items on the side here and then in order to pop up the hood you lift this up and there's a little latch here that you kind of push to the side and then you can push this up here. Okay so here's the problem I run into. <laughs> I can't push this up any higher um, to get this in the pop right here. So what I found myself doing, and I didn't want to put my hands here because it's really unsteady. Um, what if it falls? I really like my fingers. So uh, <laughs> climbing on top of the bumper, thank goodness it's strong and I don't weigh very much, and uh, fitting it in there like this. Um, clearly that is not the intent for this vehicle to um, have people standing on the bumper to get the hood open. So again, falls in the category of short people problems, but um, yeah, if you are on the more petite side of things, you're probably not gonna be lifting this up very much um, because it is not easy. Uh, so then, to get it down, it's a reverse, you know, standing up here, putting it in there, dropping it down, but, you know, I, I found like kind of crawling across the bumper because sometimes I had to sit on the hood to be able to get this latch in place. <laughs> Clearly not the easiest thing for somebody on the petite side of things, but again, most people are not gonna have that problem. So the final thing, picking nits on my do not like list. Okay, there you go. That, I thought that was hilarious. And see, this is the thing I think you miss, is I think you underestimate yourself, because you're really funny in this video. But I'm being playful, you're being serious, serious journalist. It's like, good cop, bad cop going on. Okay, the end. Like, at the beginning, I, I don't know, I just, I, I feel like a drone compared to your tone. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll flip things around, I don't know, we'll keep working on this. Because I think there's something here. And the comments on the live stream are saying there's something here. The transitions have to be better. And the yeehaw <laughs> has to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm making notes uh, right now. <laughs> Uh, Juan wants to know, wondering if, uh, uh, if we go to the re restaurant, the poor waiter. No, we're actually good in person in restaurants. We do um, opposite personalities, but we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of, lot of similar similarities. Uh, and, and by the way, I will point out, I like all food. So well, I'm actually very, like, I'm the easiest person at a restaurant. You know, I'll just be like, yeah, whatever. It's good. Just don't give me, like, friends. I don't want that. But otherwise, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I don't. I don't want that either. Like you know, little lingua. I. I yeah. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I, will, I, I will. Weird parts of, of 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 animals. I don't want. But I'm good at restaurant. Other than that. Okay. I will. Uh, I will definitely. I will get rid of the I'll, I'll film my part off again because I can do a little bit better on that. All right. So there we go. Um. There was the. So somebody said they love the behind the scenes. Oh, you guys have no idea our behind the scenes. <laughs> Stuff we. <laughs> yes, yes, we we do spend a lot of time thinking this stuff through and like, and trying to make sure that we're doing we're, we're like giving you guys the right entertainment and the right vehicles and uh, covering it the right way. Yeah, so just don't let them pick who's driving. Oh, you. So there's a there's a couple of videos going live this week of a Dodge, was it no it was a Dodge Durango Hellcat, and uh, I was doing uh, I was being film guy we did that together Infinity QX55, wait for those videos if you like Jill and I to at uh, Jill and I going back and forth, those are really good videos for that and uh, I drove, and I, I've been hesitant about publishing this one, but I think I'm gonna publish it anyways. I drove a VW ID4 at the Texas when I was there two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever the deal was. Um, the ID4 is a uh, uh, pure electric SUV from VW, and uh, let me tell you, it was uh, interesting. And so I did a video on it talking about electric, because I get a lot of crap for not loving electric vehicles from uh, viewers and my colleagues especially um, give me a lot of crap about that stuff and so I drove one and uh, yeah um, I'm going to do that too it's, it's pretty interesting and so Will from Connecticut says don't overthink it spontaneous is good so I will we'll, we'll, this is what we should do Joe I will redo some of the parts I will uh, um, yeah I won't overproduce it Tuffy says niche is being organic not overproducing so I will Take out some of the fancy transitions, even though I do pay for these transitions. I will, I will take something off, and uh, I will, we'll, we'll see that. I definitely want to see your thoughts on ID4. Yeah, it's interesting. You should go over vehicle trackers. Uh, I'm actually posting my ID4 video on Friday. So, because um, I, I did a video separate from Tim when I was at the Texas Auto Riders thing. So, I'm going to post my little thing. I already have it queued up. Really? On your channel? So, um, if you, yeah, completely separate from you on my channel. I actually, I already have it scheduled. Is that crazy for Friday? That's crazy. That is crazy. So I haven't seen yours and you haven't seen mine. Mm -mm. Hmm. That's, that could be an interesting, uh, that's interesting. Uh, it won't be the same video. We're not doing comparison video together, but it that could be a really interesting, um, to see them both on the same day. I should, we should point yours to mine and, you know, back and forth. Um, that, that could be interesting. So yeah, so we have, uh, ID4 will come out and then there we go. So organic, let it flow. Okay. All right. So I think we're getting a lot of good feedback on that stuff. Thank you for being the, uh, test mules on that stuff, um, on what's going on. Uh, there is, uh, speaking of, uh, more testing and this, you guys are going to turn it off here in a minute, but, um, I, I do have the opportunity to do minivan testing. So is a minivan an SUV or a truck? Nobody really knows. But they're all all the minivans are new this year. First time ever. They're all being new. And so Except they're good. The Honda. The Honda's not really new. Okay, well, they said there's some new stuff to them. Um, but anyways, I put my wife to work. My wife is driving all three minivans in the next month and a half, I think it is. So she is going to be doing the reviews on that. So if you want to see more of my wife, it is coming um, so yeah, so there's that kind of stuff going on behind the scenes. Oh, I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else behind the scenes. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Oh, we're both going to Texas and 
first of June for a big Toyota thing, um, which will probably be. Hopefully, you're coming to Chicago for the Chicago Auto Show. Yes, yeah, so I'm coming to Chicago for the Chicago Auto Show. I may make that a family trip. I haven't quite decided. Um, but yeah, so the uh, Toyota thing in June will probably be. Tundra um, will be probably there, and uh, you're probably going to see that going live. I uh, just bought the new Toyota Sienna yesterday, John says. That's in our driver right now in a green color. It's really crazy. Um, for sales category, it's a truck. I don't know what it is. It, 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 with the seats folded down or the third row folded down, second row like move forward, it can haul like quite a bit like a truck can. It's like basically a covered truck bed in the back. It's really impressive. I know a lot of um, painters and construction people actually use it that way. Yeah, people yeah, YouTube. So yeah. I haven't seen the new Sienna yet. I, I did it in June to drive to Duluth, Minnesota to run a half marathon. Right. That's in June. That is June 19th. Um, Toyota actually got me a free entry to the grandma's, I think that it's called the grandma's half marathon or the grandma's, but I'm doing the half, so I'm only running 13 miles. But, um, and they, so I asked them for a Sienna to drive, because uh, it'll, it'll be like an eight hour drive from Chicago. And I'm looking very much forward to seeing, because I've seen other people's reviews and like the reclining seats and the cool features and all that. So I'm looking forward to spending some quality time in it. Okay. I'll be very curious to see what your wife says. Yeah, I, I will, uh, I, I'll be... <laughs> I was just thinking I was going to meet you in Duluth in June. I put it on the calendar for me to there. Uh, Tommy from TFL wants to know, when is the golf cart review coming? Um, <laughs> so people that don't know personally, I did buy a golf cart this year. I uh, So I don't know. If you guys want to review my golf cart, I can do a review of my golf cart. Um, it's a gas engine golf cart <laughs> um, because. So, yeah, I, I do have uh, I, I do have the idea of a golf cart. Um and it's a lot of fun, and I wrapped it, and so I don't get rained on, don't get blown around in the wind. I have a Mr. Buddy heater. Um, see, it's it's really good stuff. So yeah, I I don't know, that'd be kind of fun. I could do a golf cart review. Oh, I am interviewing a guy who bought a uh, Platinum Reserve Nissan Titan, who's in the area. He'll be there uh, doing the interview on Friday. Um, I think the Rav4 Prime is Marvel, but the price point alone makes it unflattering. Yeah, the price is insane on that Rav4. All right, so that's uh, yeah. That's. I think that's all I have tonight. Do you have anything else? No. I, I'm still thinking about the <laughs> 392, 392 review and how like it doesn't match, but that's fine. <laughs> you you are being outvoted here, by the way. But but this is like 67 people. <laughs> I, I, I mean. Get more than a thousand views, like three thousand views on our videos, and so like I, just a small sampling. I yes, I maybe I am being too hard on myself. I I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe I am. <laughs> I will take out the e haw. I will move stuff around. I kind of like the idea of my intro starting before your intro. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe um, you can cut my intro out. I don't know. I just feel like my intro does not set the tone for the video. And you don't interject enough. Okay. Jill, intro. Yeah, that, can it? That is, that is how I feel. Tim, interject more. Okay. Yes. I didn't, I, yeah, I will, I will do more interjections. Um, all right, there we go. I, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, TFL starting TFL golf cart. <laughs> you got, do it. Um, I will tell you, there's not a lot of stuff to review out there. Buying a golf cart is not that, uh, not much competition. Uh, check your emails. Yeah, yeah, Gene, you're in my inbox, buddy. I got your stuff. It's just, it's just been buried. And um, what I wanted to say, something else. Somebody said something else. Um, yeah. No, I'm not gonna lift the golf cart. I'm not lifting the golf cart. I was debating about putting a turbocharged engine in it, though. Make it a little faster. Um, it goes 19.5 miles per hour. Because if you go over 20, it's considered okay. dangerous. What I want to say is after your weekend of mountain golfing, and oh, your tumble, <laughs> like, you do not need to add any more horsepower and potential catastrophes to your golf game. Okay. I have five minutes left. I will tell you the story. I have five minutes left. 
No, um, no more catastrophe. No turbocharged. So, my friend and I, he, uh, older guy I played a lot of golf with. I play a lot of golf with older guys. And, uh, uh, anyways, I, um, I, we went, um, out, out to South Dakota. We went up to Hot Springs, South Dakota and played a mountain course up there. Um, it's Black Hills area, so really changes in terrain. Uh, rocky, like, uh, landscape, like mountain landscape. Well, anyways, we are playing along, and my, my friend isn't a, a great golfer, and he hit a ball into the mountainside a little bit. There, so there's a, it's, it's a par four, you got to carry this little ravine, then there's a pullout spot, there's like mountainside, pullout spot, there's like a road, and then a cart path, and there's a mountainside. And so him and another guy we're playing golf with, we're like walking this hillside to see where the ball was. When he came down the hillside, he lost his balance and he basically ran and then he got to the bottom and he just basically fell and collapsed into the side of the golf cart. And he took his left, uh, no, his right knee, he basically laid on the side and his right knee went across the cart path, but the cart path... I mean, it's it wasn't smooth pavement. I mean, so it ripped his knee up. He landed miraculously. He landed um, with his uh, rib cage on the bottom side of the golf cart. So the golf cart ledge. He was grabbing the steering wheel and he hit his head. He's six eight. Hit his head on the top of the roof and slid his way down. If he didn't hit his head on the roof and take off some of the momentum. He would have smacked his head on the floor of the golf cart. And I think I might have taken the hospital at that point because he might have been knocked himself unconscious. And I look over at him because I was on the green. I look back and he, blood is just flowing out of his left knee. And he is holding on to the steering wheel. And just, he's just, his eyeballs are, I mean, he's just, he's in shock, right? And so I was like, holy cow. So I went over and tried to help him up. And first it didn't work because I was holding my club and I put my club down because he's 6'8", 250. I mean, he's a big guy and I'm not a big guy. So I got him up. And then we, we put him on the cart. We had, there was no beer drinking at this point. We put him in the golf cart, and he, you know I got him cleaned up, and somebody had sanitizer for him, and so he put that on there, and he, he luckily had some tissue paper with him, so he cleaned up his knees best he could. And so we start driving along, and that was like in the, the 10th hole or something, and he was determined to play 18. So we played 18 about this. And so we, playing 18, we get to the 17th hole. And it's it's a really cool hole. It's it, I, I was teeing up from the the I was on the the tips. I played the tips at this course. I was really high, and you go way down this fairway, and it takes a big right turn. It's a par five, so you go out, big right turn, and you go up the greens up in the corner. And so I hit a ball out, and I got out to the, the bunker area. But he hits a ball, and it goes out, and it lands in what's a what what would normally be a full lake, a full like pond. At this point, the pond water is very low. It's not. It's not a very low. It's it's very low water in this because I, it's I guess still May and they don't fill these up so much. So we drive down there and I could see his ball in the water, and so when I was looking along, um, it's got these like landscape rocks that are in the bed of the of the pond, and I think that's meant to you know keep water erosion that kind of stuff happening. And so I'm looking at these rocks. I'm like, well, I can see your ball. So he gave me a, ball, a golf ball retriever. And I stepped on a big rock. And I went um, to go to get the golf ball. Well, when I stepped on the big... The, I put my weight on the, the rock and went to step up, make, a, make another step in the, in the pond. The rock I stepped on moved. And I went down. And I landed on my left side on more rocks on in the rock bed. And holy cow, that freaking hurt. Um... So what for? Some, you gotta show your arm. Yeah, I show the arm. The arm, the arm is good right now. It's. It's better. This yeah. was this was bleeding. That was all bloody. I had a bruise on my hip. I had I have a bruise on my kneecap that I can't see, but I bent down and knelt on something today, and holy cow, did that hurt. And then I had a muscle contusion on my shin. I I couldn't. I mean, it hurt to walk. Um, so I I I ended up giving up on the golf ball and getting the cart. And so I went and I finished the hole and I went for the green and two and missed about that far. But anyways, um, we finished up and we're driving back. It's a two-hour drive back from South Dakota. And here, he, here he's all bloody. And I wasn't – I was some blood, but I wasn't – I wasn't – there wasn't – there was only one beer had on the back nine. We weren't drunk at all. <laughs> I don't actually like to drink in the golf course. 
nine? No, there was zero in the front nine, and I think we had. I think. I think after he fell, I feel like after he fell, we stopped. We stopped, or the cart girl came by. We bought a beer or something like that, um, because he needed something at that point. Um, because he was just. Ugh. But I actually don't like drinking the golf cart, golf course, because I just. I don't. I just. I don't play well. And I don't enjoy it. It just. It's not a fun experience. So, anyways, to finish the story up, we're driving the Chevy Blazer back, which I have a review coming in this, but um, driving the Chevy Blazer back, and we get back into town, and my wife and kids were out of town that weekend, and so he's animate about going to dinner. I mean, he's he's 75, he's been a bachelor for 25 years, something like that, so I mean, this is like a, holy cow, Tim's available, let's let's go, let's go do this, um, let's go, let's go have dinner, and I'm like, dude, I'm like... I'm like my leg is starting to cramp up, right? I mean, the the the, the muscle tension it, it, it had a contusion. I mean, it, it was starting to really get tight. And so I got out at his house, walked around the vehicle. I said, "All right, we'll go to dinner." So I meet him at Applebee's, and I have a Band-Aid on. I put some Neosporin on. He had done Neosporin. He had a big like uh, he put his uh, big patch, uh, the Band-Aid. What do they call that? The anyways, the tape. He put that on his knee, and we walk in. To Applebee's, looking like we just got done in a fight. <laughs> like, like, like I, I told him, I was like, I was like, yeah, you can follow my personal account if you guys don't find me on Facebook. That's fine. Um, I, I told him, I was like, dude, I'm like, uh, let me just hit you in the lip, and that way it looks like there's an actual fight that went on. <laughs> I was like, I was like, why are we going to Applebee's? Like, why do we have to go out to eat when we both are bloody? <laughs> The hunger games it was and and honestly that course kicked our butts both of our butts i mean i didn't i didn't score i hit the ball well didn't score well it was a tough course i we don't i don't play in hill courses very often i mean the, our course here is really flat i mean it's along the hillside but it's really kind of flat and so i hadn't played in those courses for a long time and so mentally i was beat down physically i was beat up i was bloody and we're eating dinner at Outbees, and i and i i, I just can't imagine what the waitress and the people were thinking if unfortunately we're in the high stools at the bar they couldn't see his knee but yeah he's he he, he, he i played golf with him today and uh his knee is all like scab like big scabs all over his knee well yeah so um in town gene we have some mom and pop restaurants that aren't very good um we try them but it just the service is terrible and we have Applebee's and chilies the night before we went to chilies to celebrate his retirement and that was we couldn't go there again. So yeah, it was it was it was quite the story. All right, that's it. Sayonara. So wait, no, no, no. The end of that story is no turbo charge engine. It's a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> that that, that no. could be true. Just, just say no. Well, it, you can't handle it. <laughs> in my defense, my golf cart was at my home course. I didn't take it up there with me, but yeah, it was it was that was that was quite an experience. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's all from us. Uh, put comments down below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. We will see you down the road.